Close your eyes and imagine you are standing up to your knees in a cold river. The water is rushing around you. You see a fish swim by. Your feet crunch in the rocks as you walk around. Above you, the sky is clear and blue. You're holding a metal pan. You dip it down into the water and scrape it along the bottom, picking up rocks and small gravel. After lifting it out of the water, you sift out the larger rocks and swirl it around, looking very closely at the minerals. You swirl it again, and then you see it, a glint of something shiny. You reach down into the water and pick it up. Sure enough, it's a gold nugget. You hold it up in the air and shout, I found one! I found one! Your friends nearby see it and congratulate you. You've found gold. In 1848, in California and the United States, a man named John Sutter was building a sawmill. Sutter had hired several workers to help him build the sawmill along the American River in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. One of the workers, James Marshall, was looking into the water when suddenly he saw something shiny. He got down into the water to look closer and noticed a small gold rock. He showed it to the other workers. Could it be real gold, or was it just fool's gold, also known as pyrite? James and the others spent the rest of the day testing the rock to see if it was real gold. To their surprise, the rock he found was actual gold. Gold is special for many reasons. First, it's not like most metals, which are gray. It's a shiny, beautiful color that is perfect for making jewelry. It's also soft, but doesn't break apart when shaped by tools. Gold also lasts a very long time and doesn't rust in water. When John Sutter realized it was real gold, he was worried for a couple reasons. One was that he didn't own the land he was building the sawmill on, so he needed to find a way to buy it quickly so he could own the gold on it too. The second reason was that once others found out gold was near his land, everyone would rush there to try and mine it too. Sutter made deals with the local Native Americans until he owned the land, but he went about it in a way that wasn't fair. And even though he tried to keep it a secret, his workers started telling their friends. Before long, word spread about gold in California. A newspaper headline in San Francisco read, Gold Mine Found. At this time, not very many people lived in California, but with news spreading about gold, that would change very quickly. This is called a gold rush. This wasn't the first time a gold rush happened in the United States or other places in the world. In North Carolina in 1799, a young boy found a 17-pound gold nugget near his home. This led to a gold rush there. Later, there was a gold rush in the Appalachian Mountains, and after the California gold rush, there would be one in Alaska. As word about gold in California spread across the United States, people started traveling from all around, eager to become rich. Someone searching for gold is called a prospector. Prospectors traveled to California by land and by sea. Going by land was the cheapest way to go, but was also the longest trip, taking seven months. Prospectors joined groups of wagons, called wagon trains, and used the Oregon, California, and Santa Fe trails to get there. Going by land was very dangerous. They often ran out of water, got diseases, or ran into trouble with Native Americans who didn't want them on their land. The more expensive but faster way to travel to California was by sea. Prospectors usually left from New York or Boston and either went all the way around the tip of South America at Cape Horn, which took five or six months, or they took a ship to the Isthmus of Panama. From there, they crossed the land at the Isthmus, a narrow neck of land, in a wagon. Then they boarded a second ship and took it north to California. This was the fastest way to go, but was also dangerous. Prospectors traveling through the jungles of Panama often caught malaria or yellow fever along the way. Once prospectors reached San Francisco, they usually bought mining supplies and all of the other gear they needed to mine gold. These tools included a knife, a pick to break rocks, a shovel, a round tin pan for panning for gold, a rocker, a tent, and food needed to survive. As more miners came through San Francisco, the town began to grow. More people built stores there to sell tools and other supplies. They also built hotels and places for entertainment to accommodate the prospectors passing through. 
From San Francisco, prospectors traveled another 140 miles into California. From San Francisco, prospectors traveled another 140 miles into California before they started searching for gold. They usually looked in streams first, using pans to dig up the loose rock and sift through it for flakes of gold. This is called panning for gold. Once the prospector found a spot worth mining, they would stake their claim, which means reserving it for themselves. Panning for gold was very hard work. Their beards grew long, they became very dirty doing the work, and often the food didn't give them proper nutrition. Many prospectors who traveled all the way to California spent all of their money and never found any gold. The other name for prospectors in California was a 49er, because the year was 1849. You may also heard of the football team, the San Francisco 49ers, which comes from the prospectors who brought fame and more people to California. The 49ers who did discover gold took it to cities like Stockton or Sacramento or all the way back to San Francisco to have their gold weighed and sold to the bank. These towns began to grow because prospectors wanted a comfortable place to stay, good food to eat, and entertainment after living out in the wild for so long. In 1849, San Francisco went from having 150 people there to 6,000. Five years later, 50,000 people lived in San Francisco. Towns nearby the gold became known as boom towns. They were wild, rowdy places where prospectors went for entertainment and to spend the money they earned for mining gold. Many miners were unlucky and never became rich during the gold rush, but some did. One of those was John Bidwell. He eventually found $2.5 million worth of gold in today's money, and 600 miners worked there in what became known as Bidwell's Bar. The brothers John and Daniel Murphy also became very wealthy, along with John Fremont. Most people never found large amounts of gold, but instead just small amounts in rivers. But some people became very wealthy not by mining gold, but by building stores and hotels and other businesses to support all of the prospectors coming into San Francisco. If you've ever worn jeans, they became very popular in San Francisco at this time. In 1850, a German businessman named Levi Strauss moved there to start selling his pants. They were made of denim and had pockets and lasted longer than cotton pants. They later became known as Levi's and are still a popular jean company today. The Giardelli Chocolate Company also started in San Francisco during the gold rush and has been in business for more than 160 years. Our family loves their chocolate chips, and if you ever visit San Francisco, be sure to get ice cream with their chocolate toppings there. Once most of the gold nuggets and flakes and rivers had been discovered, miners had to start digging down into the earth to get it. These are called gold deposits. Miners had to tunnel down to get the ore, which is the hard rock with veins of gold inside it. Tunnels were dug and dynamite was used to break up the rock. Mining was very dangerous. Workers went deep into the ground using elevators which often broke. The air was poor underground and sometimes there were cave-ins. The mining was also bad for the land and water in many of these places. A chemical called mercury was used to separate gold from rock dust. The mercury was also poisonous to the miners, and much of it got washed into the rivers and killed fish and other animals. Farmland was also destroyed as miners chipped away at the earth. Laws had to be passed to protect the land. The gold rush also caused people to leave other work, such as farming and shipping. The other problem was more people moved into California, and Native Americans who had lived there for generations were forced off their land onto reservations. Over time, it became harder to find gold, so prospectors left California for other places. Silver had been discovered in Nevada, so many of them moved there, or just decided to do something else with their life. With this, many of the boom towns turned into what became known as ghost towns. This just means that people no longer needed the town, so the buildings were left unmaintained and grew old and fell apart. But even though the gold rush was over, the United States would forever be changed. San Francisco became a big city with over 50,000 people living there. While the United States had mostly been populated in the east, it now reached from east to west, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. Today, almost a million people live in San Francisco, and since the advent of the internet, 
had seen success in software as people moved to the Bay Area and Silicon Valley and worked for large tech companies such as Google, Apple, and Facebook. We hope you enjoyed this episode about the California Gold Rush, and be sure to tune in next week.